All right, guys, well, we got the shop cleaned up a little bit here. I'm back working on the control stick and torque tube. Finally got this down where I like it um, as far as smoothness and fit. So we'll go ahead and get that uh, final touched up, and then we'll, we'll repaint that there. And then I was working on these uh, bushings here. This is what gives you the nice fit towards the back of the uh, torque tube. And because, again, because of the uh, powder coating, I had to kind of hand fit these. So I've basically just been using my Dremel tool and doing a real smooth job and just taking a little bit of material off at a time, test fitting it, repeating, doing it over again, and then uh, getting this to fit so that it's snug but not too tight. That way we can put a little uh, lubricant in there, a little grease, and we'll have a nice smooth fitting torque tube. So that's where we're at right now. I'm going to go ahead and try and get this finished up prepping and get that reinstalled back into the uh, fuselage. All right, we'll do a final test fit before we actually install it permanently. Drop that down in there. That comes forward. All our stainless washers goes on here. We picked up at Zenith. That's interesting that there's the washer is holding it up from going all the way back because we've got a little take this one bolt head just a teeny bit here so I can probably turn that just a tad and that should sink right in there there we go a little turn of that bolt head there and now you can see that the washer is tight against the uh, nylon bushing there and our stops are working which these haven't been adjusted yet but you can see the idea behind that these will get turned out everything will get tightened down not quite ready to finish it up yet but we're getting there all right well this torque tube uh Bushing has proven to be kind of a pain in the rear end. Um, of course, I had to wind it up a little bit to get uh, to take up the difference in the powder coat. But as you can see, first of all, don't monkey around with the bolts. Just get these holes a little bit bigger. Otherwise, you'll be fighting that the whole time. So I widen these holes up just a tad, just so I can easily slide the bolts through. But you can see as I sandwich that together, it's not quite... 90 degrees I can kind of force it and get it 90 degrees but then of course it gets tighter so we're going to play with that fit a little bit may just have to take a little bit more off this side right here just to get that to come in a little bit or it could be fine the way it is I'm going to fit it up and try it out here all right guys before I put this back in the aircraft uh, I wanted to show you here let me move the camera back there there we go so this joint right here this particular welded piece on the control stick had a teeny bit of a tweak in it so it was bent in towards the uh, torque tube which meant that when you did this action here it was kind of digging in on the side so I did a couple things one I put this in a vise and gave it a twist outwards that relief uh, gave some relief to the, to the tension it was putting here and then I also took uh, with the stick off and just did a nice rounded file maneuver on the sides here just to give it a nice, and this doesn't have any grease or anything in it now, but just to give it a nice, smooth, it's got just a teeny bit of tension, but it's moving real nice and smooth now. So it's almost like doing some fine gunsmithing on a trigger job or something. You know, you really got to finesse that. You don't want it too sloppy and loose, but then again, you don't want it rubbing in and making marks in here. So got that adjusted down uh, or uh, sanded down. And so we're going to take this apart. We'll get this painted up real quick. Put this back together, get the uh, lock nut on here, and then put this back in the airplane.
Well, while I was waiting for that paint to dry on the control stick, I decided to start uh, working on the cabin frame door sill and uh, got this lower piece here. Now, this is the piece that you have to bend in several locations. There's been some other videos out on this. It's really straightforward, guys. I literally did this in about five minutes. So, you know, the nice thing with the parts being cut at Zenith, you're pretty much bending them on the lines. Once you get them bent over, you put the thing in there, clamp it down, and you're about 95% the way away uh, there. Now, they do have an online manual. I'll put a link uh, in the video below. You can download it. Uh, this document here, while it looks like a cruiser, it's still uh, the same information pretty much. So they're going to talk about, um, you know, this is the upper channel here. Let's get to the last page here after all this. And we'll get into, okay, right here. So here's where it talks about bending the channel using uh, a pair of uh, channel locks, or excuse me, a crescent wrench. Um, I basically used two things. I used the uh, crescent wrench and I used my seamer pliers here, hand seamers. So being able to hold that on one side of the uh, line and then put the crescent wrench on the other side and just basically bend it. Uh, you really can't mess up because once that comes together to a point, you're pretty much where you need to be. Uh, I then basically just laid it on the edge here and clamped it down. Now there's gonna be some light fitting and tweaking, of course, uh, needed. Uh, we want these these lines to be right in the crack here on the bins of the angle that it's under. But once we get that lined up, it's pretty much just start drilling the holes and put our Clecos in. The only part that is not drilled is this one up here. And of course, we'll just bring that in and uh, get that drilled. So uh, good start to the doors already, guys. We'll get that going and uh, I'll do the next one kind of in real time to show you how it's done. All right, guys, now I've got uh, the, the flange here. This is actually the pilot side flange. And uh, we're gonna take it with the flange, the door sill, where the door's gonna come in facing us. This is gonna be the inside. Uh, let me just get that right here. Okay, this is the inside of the airplane. This is the outside of the airplane. Zenith has cut in points where you need to bend this piece of metal here. So all I'm gonna do I'm going to put a little tick mark right on the center of this machined out little notch. Just use any kind of a straight edge and then just carry out that, that line. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it's just a guide basically. And you can see there we have a line right where the middle of that crack is. We're going to do that with all the all of the uh, grooves and then we'll start the bending process. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. There's no exact. It's going to bend where it wants to anyways because of where they've cut that. Um, but we're going to put a mark there just so we have a, a way to eyeball and you, when we're using our tools we can kind of eyeball that line as our bend line. Okay. I got one, two, three, four lines uh, that are marked. Now we're going to start bending. I do want to make one note that on the very aft uh, groove, the aft line, so this would be the rear of the cabin, the front would be this way. On this last bend here, they do recommend that you make three lines because it's actually going to be bent uh, kind of three different ways because the fuselage changes the direction at that point. So again, all you really need to do there is pick an angle just to give you another clamping spot and we're going to basically do a little christmas tree groove here we're going to put three lines on here because this again is going to be doing a slight angle change there now it's going to follow the fuselage anyways so even if you're not perfect on the bend you could always tweak it after the fact but we'll put the three lines there anyways all right, we're gonna go ahead and do this in real time. You can see I've got the first groove right here. I got one, two, three, and then there's that last one that has the three lines on it. So again, no rocket science here. I'm gonna grab this plate. I'm gonna grab the other side of it here. Okay, and then we are going to basically bend. Actually, let me flip sides here because I have more leverage with this side. And we're bending it this direction. Tighten this up and 
bend. First bend, done. I'm gonna slide this down. Again, we're gonna grab right here, close to our line. Reinforce close to the line with the wrench. Snug it up and bend. Okay, not a big bend there. Move down to our last one. Grab it again. And bend. Again, they're gonna touch the tip here. You can see we're already starting to take shape. Look at that. So again, it can be tweaked after the fact, but we're getting it, we're getting there pretty quick and pretty close to where we need to be. Okay. Now we've got our three bend. So let's try this one here. We're gonna support this back here. Now this one, I'm gonna kind of twist this way as well as this way. So I wanna come over, but I wanna kinda come this way a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna move down a little bit. I'm gonna bring this in. Now I can even grab down here if I want to. Bring this up a little bit, okay? And we'll grab here. And we'll get our bend out a little bit here. There we go. And the reason for that is there's kind of a sweeping curve there. So let's take this over to the plane and see how close we got on our first try. All right, guys, here we go. I'm gonna tuck this up here. I'm gonna drop this down in here. Give us a little push. Put these grooves on the line. And look at that. We are pretty much right on the money, right out of the gate. Now, you'll want to clamp these, wherever your lines are, the bins are, you want to clamp those right as close as you can to where these bins are. That's going to keep the shape of this the way you want it. But you can see that just with that quick bin session we did, we're pretty much right there. Now, this one will take a little bit more tweaking because, again, it's got that funky curve there, but not much. Once this is clamped down tight, we can then clamp this and we can work our way up in either direction. Um, I don't have enough clamps because I'm still working on the other side that I put in, but you can see that the notching, the bending didn't take much time at all. It's not rocket science. Bend them on the line. You can't really bend them too much. You can tweak them any way you need to. Clamp them down, drill the holes, and rivet it in. What I'm doing now is just tweaking all these clamps a little bit, tightening them up, getting them exactly where I want them before I start drilling the holes. Got my lines where I want them. Well, we've got the entire door sill drilled and clecoed in. Yes, I used a lot of clecos, but we want this to be nice and tight. So all the holes get put where they need to be. Now we will uh, remove the trim. We will take the holes up to A4s. All right, actually it's A5s, I believe. I'll have to double check that. A4s or 5s. Um, and then we will deburr everything and start riveting that on. Now, don't forget that down here near the uh, handle, which was where the, the door handle will be, there's another latch piece that will be in there. We'll cover that when we get to there. We'll make sure and leave those rivets out when we get to the riveting portion. Now that we've got all the holes drilled, it's time to take them up one size and uh, get them drilled the final hole size. You see I've got the upper strip here clamped together. I've also got that kind of notched around this upper bracket so it fits real nice. And then the only one left to do is the, uh, the, the extension that goes up here, but this actually holds the windscreen on, so that'll be done later. So really all we gotta do now is take these uh, Take the copper size up to the black size, and then take it off, clean them up, and rivet it on. And again, we don't want to rivet the three holes here until we get that uh, lower uh, latch plate in. And there's also an, a forward latch plate that goes here. So when we get to that point, we're going to leave those rivets out. 
So uh, on to drilling it out to the final size. Flat file here just to knock the edges of these burrs off on the underside of the channel here. Found a lot of room there, but you can kind of use the head of the file to knock that little lip off. All right, we can see we've got all kinds of burrs on the back side of here, so we'll just start at one end and start taking them off. All right, back in she goes. All right, put some rivets in. All right, guys. Well, that's going to call it a night for me. Uh, got one side done, passenger side. Tomorrow we will start on the pilot side. We've already got that uh, bent, but we need to start doing the holes. So uh, that's what we'll be working on tomorrow. Hope you guys are liking the videos. We'll see you on the next one.